What's up, coach? How's your day? Uh, busy. Busy day. Busy. busy but good. That's all right. It's gonna be a. That's just how it's gonna be. How it's been the last two or three days. So hey, gonna keep it busy. The next probably Monday and Tuesday are gonna be slammed, but and then hopefully uh, Wednesday on will be will be much calmer. So just gotta make it through and do the best I can and knock out things I can each day and move on to the next. Oh man, what a logical approach to life you got there. <sighs> Easier said than done, but I'm doing my best. Yeah, and you tr- you got all that going on. You're tracking athletes. Um, I'm tracking. Actually, I'm just kicked back in the hotel room watching the uh, replay of the East Carolina UConn football game from yesterday. Not much going on here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, that sounds like terrible, but sure. Hey, whatever floats your boat, man. <laughs> Not just tracking, trying to keep up. I I really want to. Uh, Throw a shout out to Kate for helping me out at Wisconsin because it really does help having somebody with me here. So in the future, we're gonna make that plan. Mm, okay. I'm doing all these video. I'm running around trying to keep track of everybody, and uh, it's just a little uh, tricky. But uh, we're getting it, it done. For, is it time for an internship? I think it might be. Okay, I'm okay with that. Weekend road trips to Ironman cities. I like it. Yeah, hanging out with me. Hanging out with Mike, sometimes Robbie, and hopefully the C26 Sprinter van. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so uh, how's, the, how's the old weather up there? Oh, it's uh, it's getting hot. Um, I was running you know, I was running around shooting video at the swim at, what, uh, 8.30, and I was yeah. working up a little lather already. So I anticipate this run is going to be a little bit uh, tough for some people. Um, how's the how's the crowd support there? Um, it I know it picked up. Uh, I think what happens, I think a lot of people kind of actually go up to the start of the swim for some reason. I don't know why oh, yeah. they would do that because you can't watch anywhere. But yeah, as as they started coming out of the water, I started getting uh, muscled around on the fence. I had a perfect oh, shot and muscled around, huh? Well, it's because you know everybody's commenting on how lean and skinny you look. So, I mean, just get used to it. You're just going to get kind of bumped around all the time from here on out. Yeah, I know. I, I, I you know, I'm shooting <clears throat> video and, uh, like, people will just jump right in front of me and stick their cell phone right out like they're tracking on it. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, I know this is an important moment for you, but uh, can you yeah. pull your cell phone back? Seriously. We're but, capturing our own special moments. Yeah, we're Jack trying. Dragon. Yeah. The, I, I just tweeted a or uh, Instagrammed a picture of uh, the last swimmer coming in. And it was that was actually my most special moment at the, at the time of this race because it's cool because all the kayaks kind of just follow them in and they all just sort of hang around and you swim through about 20 or 30 kayaks. Wow. And, or in this case, float on your back. <laughs> the, last swimmer, the last two swimmers were kind of floating down. <laughs> um, yeah. Takes all kinds, man. Takes all kinds. Whatever, whatever it takes to get you through. Yeah, you know, I got to hand it to them. And then they both actually got out and ran. So it was kind of something was going on with the swim, and hopefully their bike and run come together. Yeah. Um, biggest obstacle for a lot of people. So good to see them getting out and on to the next, on to the next part. Yeah, and I think the current was a little swift today based on some times. Oh, uh, it usually is. Yeah, it usually is. Um, maybe a little swifter back to the early days. Um but I think they're going to need it because of this heat again. I, I, you know, I just can't help but look at that uh, the hills on the on the north side of the river and and think about what's about to happen. Yeah, it's going to get nasty. Yeah, I went out running yesterday and I am a mess today. Oh really? Yeah, you know I'm a, you know I'm 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 not I'm not going to say I'm having doubts, but I guess I've been putting in some workload, and you get to that point maybe like three weeks out where you're like, man, I don't feel like I'm in shape at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I ran pretty good yesterday, but now as I walk around and spectate, um, I'm having one of those spectator moments where my uh, heels are acting up, and my IT band, and my hip, and I was just, ugh. So did uh, uh, you know? I I guess we'll. I mean. Did you stand or did you kneel for the national anthem this morning? I, you know, I wasn't up there. <laughs> you weren't up there. No, but um, I would have probably stood. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's getting. I, every once in a while, I catch a, a 
catch a little bit of what's going on there, man. Are you, are you still there? All right, just just, just checking. I'm, I'm just messing with you. you know, no, I mean, you know, did, did our president really tweet out that uh, Steph Curry is not welcome at the White House? It's like, what is going on, man? Uh, it's just amazing. A, yeah. It, it Honestly, that is like the world that we live in now. And it like boggles my mind. And it, Alan and I talk about all the time. I'm like, I, I, I'm hoping that our our generation that's raising kids are going to do something like a not like a you know a some kind of a revolution not like an intense one but like a a, a digital social media content revolution to where we try to take our kids back to like less digital stuff less consuming everything on a screen and getting back to like Doing things outside, talking to people face to face. Um, yeah, because you know, I mean, let's be honest, man. Like th- the majority of individuals, at least that I come into contact with these days, are more concerned with making friends than they are making a difference. And it used to Ooh. be the exact, just you know, just I mean, all the people, everybody you see, everybody. I mean, that's that's the age we live in, social media. Yeah, but it's you mean making that. friends like real friends or just sort of making no, – building that's, friends that's, lists? That's the point. Well, it's you know – It's building friends lists and getting likes and then, you know, and then you – yeah, we're not going to go all political on that. But, you know, no, I was no, no. the I, same thing today too. I was like you got all this social media content and Instagram and all this kind of stuff which basically allows people to fake their way through life. And then I, I honestly see a distinct – um, symbiotic relationship between that and the ridiculous opioid crisis that's going on in America right now. Oh. Um, how many people are? <laughs> I do. I can't. Uh, self medication because uh, you live. Oh. Uh, you because you yes yeah, self medication and o- ODing on over the counter prescription drugs because you know you live a perfect life on Instagram but in behind the behind the shadows. Uh, dude, I mean, I, I wrote about that couple. I mean, I'm almost so far into that train that I'm almost off that train now because I've been. It seems like everywhere I look now, that's what people are talking about. And I've been like, Jesus, it's been going on forever. Yeah, I mean, like, can we ever spot anything before it gets out of control in this world? Well, no, because something like you know, a celebrity will have to die or something. You know, when they do, like every other month from it. But still, like, it takes someone that's popular or well-known or a sports star to die from it for it to get any like you know honest honest attention but uh, um, well thanks. you talk about anyway. that yeah hey can we go outside and do what i'm outside i'm out watching this event and there's a lot of these people you know giving their all and like you know suffering through the swim and whatever and everybody i'm coming in contact with is looking at a phone <laughs> it's like the iron man tracker is awesome but in a way now it's kind of almost suck people in more because it's it's really uh continuous in a way uh we you know people are looking at those maps now and uh they're looking at the estimated times and there's just uh you know there's really well, it's, it's about yeah i mean and you you've always been you know, traditionally in the past, you've always done a, a much better job at this than I have, but I'm, I'm definitely have come around since having a son and getting married and stuff. It's, it's your choice of consumption and how you want to retain your experience. And a lot of people want to retain it via their Facebook feed and Instagram and a picture on their phone versus some people who just want to put the phone down and consume the experience or, you know, video it or whatever. But it's, it's like, it's like it's the same thing as I when I have athletes. It's like yeah, I just I went to go for a run and I forgot my watch, you know. So I had to go back. I'm like next time just go run because it still counts. Yeah, you know it's like th- nothing matters and nothing's believed and nothing really really counts as much if it's not able to be captured digitally. Mm-hmm. And and that's you know and 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 that's like and I, and. Uh, for me, like that's why I will a never spend a single dollar uh, on finisher picks um, because I honestly don't even know if I have like a favorite like, captured moment of racing like an Ironman because they're all in my mind or they're all from training. 
or they're all what I learned. You know, none of them can be captured. They all have to be experienced. And I think that's why people get so emotional about when these when these bib lists come out and when the athlete guide comes out and when they get closer to their Ironman because it's a realization of – you know, cumulative experience that's about to come to an end, but also it's like recognizing like, man, like, like you you can't, you can't put it into words. You can't put it in a picture and you can't put it on like a feed. It's, it's really something you just can't honestly like describe or, and you know what? I think that's like the biggest reason why people like, Oh, so, you know, (laughs) like, Oh, so you're going out and doing that marathon again this weekend. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's got a few other things involved with it, but sure. Yeah, like that's somebody. They're like, why? They're like, that's all in one day, like without stopping. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, why? Anyway, why do you even do that? And you're like, you can't honestly explain to them because the physical part is what they can't wrap their mind around. But it's what you get from it mentally and emotionally that's the most valuable asset. And that's the part that you can't explain because you have to go through it to actually know exactly what people are talking about. And until you've done that, you honestly just can't. You can see it on people's faces when they finish. You know, you can see it when they cross the finish line. You can see, like, I think that's the best time where if you're going to capture somebody's true emotional journey, it's it's what they do and how their face is and, and how they react and show their emotion in the finishing shoot. And you can just see like the last six, eight, 12, and sometimes longer months, like finally like leaving their body and they're like, I've done it. Yeah. And those are the, and those are those things that you cannot honestly describe to, to a person unless they've actually done it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I don't, it, it is almost impossible to explain. Um, and there are, yeah, there are those moments that just, resonate as you ride by them or you deal with them in the swim or you run by them i mean yesterday i was out running man and it's funny you say that because um i was running and i was i I ran this is like the two out of two weeks i've run an ironman course (laughs) it's like i was just in madison i ran that course and then this and yesterday i ran part of the uh chattanooga course and as I was getting back to the hotel, I was getting, you know, tired and achy, and I was kind of like, why, you know, it's hot and whatever. It was in the afternoon, and I ran by, like, three guys sitting in wheelchairs, and they're amputees, and I was like, Jesus, man, you know, it's like, why am I complaining? You know, it's like, that's the grace that you need to have, you know, this, the ability to do it, and the ability that, you know, they, they talk about anything's possible, and I think that really is kind of the the thing and it just sort of transfers in many I was thinking wow if you, you know if these guys are hanging out by mile 20 I bet a lot of people would have better races you know you know it's like be grateful that you can do it too you know well yeah and I mean and that's the thing you know and that's what that's why you can't really explain it to somebody because I think it it has to be it's all relative to your own journey you know and I think that's where you know so many people talk about like why they got into triathlon or why they sign up for an Ironman because they were, you know, a lot of them were in either a dark place or going through a hard time and they needed something so big to pull them out of it. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's the same way with people who suffer from addiction and and all different kinds of forms. Like, you know, me, it's like you can't, you know, yeah. Would it be nice to just change for change's sake? Sure. But one, it's really, really, really hard to change. But more times than not it has to it takes something just like astronomically painful um in order to make yourself or not make yourself but to put you in a place to where you just finally like you know what i'm I'm doing it i'm all in let's go you know and and you have to and like i was i was joking with one of my athletes yesterday summer who was like yeah you ought to watch this show on netflix called the ranch and i was like yeah i'm good i think I've got enough memories from the place I went to treatment went for 90 days was called the ranch. And I was like, I mean, can you imagine spending 90 days with no television, no laptop, no cell phone, like the things you could figure out about yourself. Um, but you know, and, and so like, you know, the work that I did there, but I had the same kind of moment that you're talking about. I was on the treadmill early this week and I was watching, uh, I was watching Netflix actually. And I was, there's this new show called, heroin 
three or hero and E and it's, it highlights a city in, in West Virginia. But anyway, it's, it's, they have like the, they have 10 times the national average of overdoses a year in just that small town. And they show like these, these people's lives and what it's doing to them. And while, you know, I didn't have anything like that, but it's like, you know, here I am doing what I am now when I could have been somewhere else. And it just makes you appreciate your whole journey so much more than either having not gone through it. But I think that's why people have such these like incredible emotional attachments to these races and to an Ironman because they – and maybe that's it. Maybe that's why everybody wants to sign up for another one is because they they don't want necessarily that feeling of of the race – to end or the goal on the calendar to be there it's that they want that experience again like i want to i want to have that like transcendent year again i don't want to just go back to the person i used to be and if if that means signing up for another iron man again to keep me on this track then i'm doing it and i think i think for a lot of people that's the truth is that they don't want to go back and that doing and training for an iron man reminds them of how far they've come and they don't want to let go of that feeling. That's a hundred percent for me. I've, uh, I did, I've done four now I'm doing five. And the reason I keep signing up is because I know that, you know, like or hate a lot of the training or whatever, it is a way that keeps me on track. You know, it's, uh, it, in a lot of areas of life, um, it, it's a lot easier for me to have that sort of monkey hanging over me rather than, you know, just kind of settle back into, you know, because it's, it's like, like you're just saying one, you know, we're, we're all basically one, not all, but like a lot of people, I think maybe like you that get into Iron Man are one more bad turn away from really going sour. And I just, you know, I just like the direction it's taken me. And I don't necessarily know if it's 100% the answer. I'm not saying that or anything. But it keeps me on the right track. And I feel like the right answers are more accessible when I'm going down the road that Iron Man sort of takes me down. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's just, it's sort of like that, uh, in a way, it's kind of my effort at being a responsible adult <laughs> you know i mean it sounds yeah. kind of stupid but uh it does make me you know like do be more consistent with everything and i just feel like the more consistent i am with uh, training and everything like that it makes me more consistent with you know we i mean we've been 100 percent basically consistent on our podcast for you know coming up on a year mm-hmm. two two days a week um, I mean that that's nothing to sneeze at really I think that uh, you know we know that it's a good thing for us to keep doing these whether it's just you know a selfish reason or because a lot of other people really get something from them or whatever but yeah uh, there's a lot of good habits that form and you know as I wa- I told you earlier as I watch these things uh, I I'm starting to get you know especially like after last weekend staying to the end or two weeks ago and and now I stay to the end of the swim, and I'm starting to get really into the uh, the energy and emotion around the people that you know are really fighting for their last, you know, gasp, and they're 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 trying to make cutoffs here, and they're probably their first one for a lot of them, and it's just the I, I really am starting to feel that energy, and I like the the idea of of being you know supportive of people that are trying to make that change probably something that has has some crossroad in their life has happened and they've gone down this road and and it's really important to them and you can see it in their eyes and i love the idea of of helping people out and coaching people like that and um you know getting them to where you know getting them on the road that they they want to see the vision that they they would like to make reality yeah that's why our sport is so great yeah, it really is. It, it. I mean, it's just it if never. You, well, if you choose to let it be. Yeah, it never that's ceases. Like, that's like everything in life, though. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it never ceases to amaze me the the, you know, the cross section of people. That, you know, it's a wide range. Of course, it's it's like a small oh, sample. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, 
there's a lot of good stuff that goes on out at these courses and yeah and you're about to get reminded of it and see more of it here in just a few minutes when they start to come in off the bike yeah i know yeah so we're probably gonna have to make this one a little short because i do have yeah. to, i got a pretty long walk to get back to the that's right i got more moving to do i've been installing blinds and putting together entertainment centers and all kinds of stuff yeah yeah so yeah. any other thoughts going on i think it looks like our our uh team is out there executing pretty solid races to this point yeah you you know and i you know and this is for anybody who does a race where and, and this is why i never ever ever talk to athletes weeks in advance about time goals mm-hmm. because if i had to talk and i had to shut both these guys down today a couple weeks ago Look, no tell, tell me tell me about what you think i can do no no we're going to wait till we get much, much closer and we're going to see. A, because you're going to get a lot fitter. And B, look at what happened. We trained in like 20, like two or three weeks of like low 70s to like 60s. I mean, two weeks ago, I was there for Worlds and I was wearing a sweatshirt in the morning. And so if I had to like, you know, you know, caved in and be like, yeah, well, you know, given, you know, the temperatures now, you know, you could have gone this. Well, then you go in today and they're thinking, all right, well, but, I, but coach thinks I can do this, so I'm going to go into my race. And then it's 90, <laughs> you know, and it's humid. And that, that totally changes the entire dynamic of a race. And so I'll just, I'll, I guess I'll just share here as we close the text. Oh, the, I won't share the previous ones because those are, those are personal, but I'll share the last text that I sent both of them, as I said. I said, uh, you guys have done great. You're both really built to be a successful on this course. It's all about the run, all caps. Before you start tomorrow, ask yourself, would I rather go sub 11 on the perfect day and be four to 500th overall? Or maybe tomorrow, the 11 to 12 hour range and be smart on a hot day and be in the top 200? Because... It's all it's I mean, to me, it is. It's all about how you place overall against the field. You know, time time PRs on different courses are so relative that it's not even funny. And it's not even like worth debating. You know, look at the swim. <laughs> you have like age groupers in the low 40s. So don't don't look at that swim and look at a Wisconsin and be like, yeah, well, I noticed that those are a lot slower and you're not you're a beast. No, you're not. You just got a current, you know. And so it's it's all about, you know, it's all about where you place against the field because that is the ultimate yeah yes you're competing against yourself but you're also competing against other people and you're competing against everyone and so you know always look at it that way and always choose to be smart and never and i do want to say this real quick because a lot of, i've dealt with this like more times than i can imagine this last week not you know right now you're seeing a lot of people with their end goals and a lot of people right now are planning their end goals for 2018. Don't create some arbitrary number that is literally meaningless and then work your way backwards on how you want to execute it. Because you have no basis on if you can be that good or you can be a much, much better. So instead of creating a number way off in the distance, like I want to average this pace at an Ironman next August and I want to average this mile an hour on the bike, like where the hell do you even get that? And do you know what it takes to get there? Why not create numbers and then use those numbers and analysis to create what you can do and see what you're able to do when you get closer to time? So as, as, you're, as you're sitting there and you're thinking – Hey, how do I want to approach 2018? How do I want to, you know, I want to accomplish this. First and foremost, commit to getting better. And if you can commit to getting better and getting consistent and just doing the best you can possibly do, then you're going to, then you're actually going to figure out how great you can actually become. So commit to that first. And then you may just surprise yourself that if you had gone back and be like, oh, you know what? I th think, you know, maybe I could do this. Um, you know, setting yourself up with these false expectations. I'll tell you right now, the most important workout that I probably did of this a whole 100 days to Louisville thing was probably my very, very, very first functional threshold test for the bike because I had no expectations. I didn't think, all right, well, in order to get this at Louisville, I'm going to have to have this today because I want to get here. 
I did it blind, and I just thought, you know what? Given all things, I'm just going to do the best that I can and then see what happens. And that's how I've kind of taken the rest of the way. And so that, that therefore, that's giving me the opportunity to race free and to train smart and to be happy with what I'm giving because I didn't have this expectation going in of what I think I should be, be able to accomplish. So be smart, be patient, be realistic, do your best. And if you can do all those things, then you'll get the best result instead of trying to create one nine months in advance. Mm. That's good stuff, man. Yeah, power hour or power 30 minutes, however long this has been. Yeah, power 30 minutes. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm going to head back uh, down to the uh, bike in and uh, see how many people I can get wiping out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not really, but you kind of are. Yeah, you if, know. If you happen to get six or seven, you happen to get six or seven. If but, I roll uh, video and a couple people, no. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. capture that. Tell, all, tell the guys I said to remember to run smart. Um give him a gold slap on the keister for me when and if appropriate and then i do want to say quickly that i believe and uh as far as i know our june camp is now sold out for next year uh, i'm waiting on a response from two individuals but if they both to commit then june camp will be sold out for next year so we still have a few spots left in april and then some in august so if you're contemplating uh coming in and taking part of one of our awesome camps our triathlon camps in april june and august or even some of our swim camps in may and july then uh email me for additional information on c20 at c26 coach at gmail.com yeah and we're opening um uh, we're opening up for more athletes right i mean after are. after louisville yep. i'm yep. jumping in full time or on the coaching as well um so get in contact with c26 coach at gmail.com and you know if you got to, you know if you're thinking ahead think ahead <laughs> is that the same if you're yeah, thinking ahead well, think ahead listen think ahead be ahead yeah you know that's what i told the guys the cooler you start the cooler you will stay mm, yeah it on looks a day like today yeah i told them to you know douse themselves with ice water and everything before they even get in the water to swim um, and then start dousing themselves with at least one entire water bottle uh, at the very first aid station because the cooler you can start and the cooler you can stay, the less hot you will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go right there on a tree somewhere. <laughs> go do it, man. That'll right, be on man. the shirts. Uh, <laughs> All right, dude. Tell the guys I said what's up and to be smart. I will. All right, Crushing Iron Group is our closed group. Search it on Facebook and come in there for some good conversation. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram and you know all that social media stuff so you don't have to look at people yeah and uh, we'll check <laughs> you next time from the new Bruce household oh yeah looking forward to that man maybe we'll do alright dude alright buddy I'll talk to you later see you man